Good morning, everyone. Here we have a Wreck Earth spindle motor, and we're going to test the feedback. I don't have the drive that runs this spindle motor, so I'm going to couple the shaft of the motor to this little 24 volt DC motor, and we're going to apply a voltage to the DC motor, and it's going to rotate our spindle motor. Let's hook it up. Our diagram here, it says pin 13 is 5 volts and pin 14 is ground. Let's hook that up first. Here's my 5 volts. Right there is pin 13. Here's our ground. We're using this power supply right here. Piece of cardboard right here so we don't short those wires against the case of the motor. Okay, pin one, according to our diagram here, and I'll show this to you at the end of the video. Pin one is UA plus, pin two is UA minus, pin three is UB plus, pin four is UB minus. 5 is UN plus, 6 is UN minus. That's your home pulse right there. The UN plus and UN minus. So we have A, B, and Z. We're going to look at UA plus and UB plus first. scope. In a moment we'll get close to that scope. You get a better picture of what's going on. Each of these waveforms is about two and a half volts above ground. It's riding in between ground and five volts. And up here is UA. It's a sine wave. Down here is UB. UA plus and UB plus. I notice they're just like a quadrature encoder. They're 90 degrees out of phase. A and B are 90 degrees out of phase. We're rotating clockwise, looking into the shaft of the spindle motor, and the A sine wave is leading the B sine wave. If we were rotating counterclockwise, the B sine wave would be leading the A sine wave. Let's get closer to that oscilloscope. This is UA plus and UB plus. Let's take a look at UA minus and UB minus. Move the scope probes from pin one to pin two. Pin three to pin four. Now we're on UA minus and UB minus. That looks good.
Now let's go look at the home pulse. We'll look at both UN plus and UN minus at the same time. They're on pins five and six. Two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. Can you see that blip? That's the home pulse. It's a sine wave also, but it's just one blip. <laughs> that happens once per every revolution. This feedback device is good. All right, folks. Thank you very much for stopping by. For watching us test that feedback device in that wreck earth spindle motor. We'll see you next time. Evening all. Here we are at the house again. <laughs> We're going to talk about the, the feedback of the wreck earth spindle motor. Now it uses variable reluctance sensors. Those are magnetic pickups and they generate an AC voltage output as a gear tooth passes the sensor face. There's one gear but the sensors in the in that transducer are aligned so that they make a 90 degree phase shift between A and B and there's also one peg off to the side of that gear tooth for the home pulse. Here in the middle is our connector for the feedback of that record spindle motor. And you can see here's a keyway right here. And we have pin 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 pins in that connector. Let's go down and we'll look at the descriptions of each of those pins. Here's the pinouts previously described in the video. Pin 1 and pin 2 are your A and A bar, 3 and 4 are your B and B bar, 5 and 6 are your home pulse, Z and Z bar, and down here, most importantly probably, so we don't get this hooked up wrong, pin 13 is your plus 5 volts DC in, and pin 14 is your ground from an external power supply. Now you're probably wondering why do we use the variable reluctance uh, sensors for feedback? Well, extremely high speeds that these spindle motors cut at, that these spindle motors run at, we're talking 10,000 RPM. 18,000 RPM, 22,000 revolutions per minute. That's insane! <laughs> and if we had just a standard uh, encoder, like a quadrature encoder with a metal or glass or plastic code wheel rotating beneath an infrared transmitter and receiver rotating in between those, that glass or plastic code wheel or that metal code wheel, excuse me, would come apart at those ex extreme rotational forces. <laughs> they couldn't handle it. But with uh, magnetic pickups, it's no problem. You have a gear tooth 
that's made out of steel and you have a pickup that's fixed in one place looking at the, uh, at the gear tooth that passes beneath the face of that magnetic pickup. There's no weak link that can come apart at those high revolutions per minute. Is that amazing? <laughs> so if you're ever wondering why they use a transducer on some of these motors, this is why. They won't come undone at those high rates of speed. All right, folks. Now you can go out and connect your wreck earth spindle motor and test that feedback. It's getting late. We got to go cook some dinner and get up and go back to work. Appreciate you all coming over. We'll see you next time.